Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from Weather Risk, your commander of chaos, your colonel of confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather. And some things have changed here, as I mentioned a little bit on the Facebook page and on the uh, Twitter page, and uh, what I thought was going to be a pretty mild end of February into March looking, looking somewhat different. So let's get into it and show you what's changed and why. And uh, this is one of the reasons why you simply just have to follow the forecast all the time. Things change and it doesn't mean that you don't know what you're talking about. It doesn't mean that the science is bad. Shit happens. I mean, that's what it is. Stuff happens in weather. And the, you know, it's, it's one of these things that I think is the most fascinating aspect of weather. But and the one that has the most surprises to it. So let's let's get right to it. Okay, this here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is the. Uh, let's take a look at our teleconnections. Now remember, there are four teleconnections um, uh, that we look at in North America. There's two on the Atlantic and there's two on the Pacific side. So the two of them on the Atlantic side is the Arctic Oscillation, which is connected to the polar vortex and the North American Oscillation, the NAO, which is the Greenland block. So this is as of February 9th. So look at the chart here. Now the black lines show the actual trend on the Arctic Oscillation, okay? So let me call, call my arrow, see if I can make my arrow go right here. here we go, here we go. And then we can um, bring it around this way a little bit. There you go. And you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the uh, arrow, right? And then you can see the following line. Now all the models, look what it's doing here. All these models since February 9th, all had it going the uh, AO essentially positive all the way through until the end of the month. Oops, sorry, go back there. And then the NAO, same sort of thing. Here it's neutral, it goes positive, and then it's pretty much stays positive all the way through until the end of the month. You can see that all the way through. Okay, so far so good. Now with um, then the on the Pacific side, we have two teleconnections as well. We have the EPO, which is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation. That's another term for the Alaskan Ridge. And and then we have, of course, the PNA, which is the West Coast North America Ridge. So when the um, EPO is in the negative phase, uh, can we post it up here? You can see it. Uh, so when the EPO is in the negative phase here, what that does is it creates a flow from Siberia across the North Pole into Canada and then down towards the U.S. So in other words, the Arctic air mass is much stronger and much deeper. It's much more impactful. But when it's in the positive phase, the Arctic air mass is shut off and you don't get that cross polar flow. So here you can see the black line, notice here we've been in the positive phase. Now we dip down briefly here a little bit negative around February 10th or 11th and then for the rest of the month we're pretty close to neutral. That's what we're showing in February 9th. Now here's the PNA pattern, okay? And we can see this is the West Coast Ridge and it's been pretty close to neutral and now look what happens in the middle of the month. It starts going negative. When your PNA is negative, that means you have a trough on the west coast and a ridge on the east coast. So that's a mild pattern. What you want for cold and snowstorms in the eastern U.S. is you want to see the PNA to be positive, and you want the EPO to be negative. So here we have the uh, PNA is neutral, going negative. That's not what you want. And here you have the Eastern Pacific Oscillation that briefly goes negative and then goes back to neutral. So there you go. None of these factors on this one here are positive for cold or snow in late February and March, and going into March, none of them are. And one of the reasons for that is because, again, this is the data from February 7th and February 14th. So here we have the, um, call, paste it up again, you can see it. This here is the uh, European and the European Ensemble Mean, and you can see it goes into phase three in February, and then late f February towards the end of the month, we start going in towards phase four. And this here is the European Extended, which came out on, on uh, the 14th of February. And look what it does. Phase 3, then Phase 4, then Phase 5, and then Phase 6. Well, those are mild patterns. Let me show you what I mean. Now, besides these two models, there's other data besides that. This was the Extended European from February 7th. And you can see uh, most of the uh, 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 clusters are here, the uh, yellow that is around day 10 and then blue color here that's around day 15 and then day 20 so again a lot of four fives 
uh, at, at towards the end of the month going into March. And this here is the extended experimental one from Kyle McRitchie. And you can see that his uh, CFS models have it going into phase uh, four and five by the first 10, 15 days of March. Okay, well, what does that mean? What does phase three mean? What does phase four mean? Well, let's take a look, see. Now, this image here, you can see this is phase three in La Nina in the month of February. So this is what it looks like. So we have two, we have a strong block over Greenland, which is nice to see. And then we have the big ridge in the Bering Sea. Then we have a trough in the Pacific Northwest. Now that's not what you want to see. You want to see a ridge there. But we also have a trough off the New England coast, southeastern Canada, and a bit of a ridge over the southeastern states. So this is kind of a normal pattern. This is the type of situation where you have low pressure areas going up in from Texas to the Great Lakes, and then the cold front comes through, then you get cold for a couple of days, but it's not a great snowstorm pattern, but it's not horrible for cold weather. It's not a blowtorch, but it's not horrible. You have warm intervals, then you have cold intervals. That's what phase three is in La Nina in February. Now, on phase four and phase five, again, if we go to phase four and five, this is what the data was showing several days ago. Look at this huge trough on the west coast. Look in the upper left image, phase four, La Nina, February. Monster trough on the west coast, huge ridge in the Great Lakes in eastern Canada. So all the cold air is in the west coast and Canada, uh, Western Canada, and then you have a mild pattern for the plains, the Midwest, and the East Coast. And if you go to, and then a phase four in March, and the here in the lower right, phase four in March, look at the monster trough here. Look at this. And a huge ridge over the Midwest and the East Coast. Now, a bit of an up or low here off the New England coast, so New England might not be that warm, but you can see. And there is a bit of a ridge in Greenland a little bit. It's most like an Alaskan thumb ridge. It's not really in Greenland. It's mostly in the North Atlantic. But look at this enormous trough and big ridge here. That's a blowtorch. That's a blowtorch if that happens in March. Okay. Now, and then finally, if we go into phase five, which again, some of the data suggests, look what happens here in February. I mean in March. Look at this. Massive trough on the West Coast. Strong negative anomalies in Canada. Huge ridge in the Midwest and the East Coast. This is a blowtorch, if this is right. This is warm or near record warmth for March. If this is right, we don't know if it's right. That's based upon these projections, okay? We don't know if that's correct, but that's what it's indicating. Now, beyond that, if we look at the actual extended models from February 3rd, we can see that the European and the GFS models both showed a negative P&A, a trough in Western Canada down the West Coast. You can see that in both models. We have the European on the left, we have the GFS extended on the right, and they both have a significant ridge covering the eastern third of the country. So there you go. And the ridge on the west coast is not on the west coast, it's in the Gulf of Alaska. So this is a very warm pattern for end of February going into March. That's February 25 and then March 2nd. That's a warm pattern. And then beyond that, this is now looking into the extended models from February 3rd last week. This takes us to uh, March 6th. And you can see, again, the polar vortex is way to the north, almost in Greenland. So you have a strongly positive NAO. That's the exact opposite of what you want to see. You have a persistent trough on the Rockies and on the west coast. You have a big ridge covering the Midwest on the east coast. That's a, this is a very warm pattern, if this is correct. This matches this. This matches this, if that's correct. Okay, now here's what's changed. This is today's data. This is January 7th, I should say. So this is what the, the MJO is right now. You can see the MJO right here. There it is in phase three. Okay, as of February uh, 15th, this is yesterday's data. Okay, so now the new models have come out and they're doing something different. Here on the GF, we can see that it keeps it stuck in phase three almost until the end of March. That's a much slower movement. And the European, the Japanese model here on the right, I should say, look what it does. It keeps it in phase three the entire time, all the way till the end of the month of February. And then it kind of like keeps it there going almost into March. That's a change. That's very, very different. Here is the European model. The new European model keeps it in phase three. Look at the red line, and then it goes into the neutral circle, the blue line. This takes us into early March. So we're not seeing a movement into phase four and phase five. We don't see that now. That's a big, big change. And here's the Canadian model. And look what it's doing. 
there you go. Red line here, blue line into the neutral circle into early March. That's not what it was showing back here, boys and girls. That's not the same thing. Nuh-uh. That's a big change. Nuh-uh. They, that's, not, that's not the same thing. So that, that's what, and, and again, if it stays in phase three in late February and March, this is a different pattern. This is not a blowtorch. It's cold fronts and warm fronts and back and forth temperatures. There's some blocking in Greenland as well. Now, the, the West Coast pattern is not great, but it's not horrible in terms of cold. And, you know, it's possible there could be some winter weather events in this kind of pattern for the eastern half of the country. It's not a snowstorm pattern. It's not a big snowstorm pattern. Nothing here says, wow, going to get a big East Coast snow. That, no, n nothing like that. But there is winter weather possibilities in this kind of pattern in late February and early March. Okay, now the new data. Here we go. This came out today, 12Z. This is the current pattern. So let's talk about this operationally. So here's our big trough, enormous ridge on the East Coast. We know t today was mild. Tomorrow and Thursday are going to be mild. There's the trough going to drive the cold front through. All right, that's the upper air pattern. This is what it looks like. So here comes the cold front Thursday, moving through the Midwest. Big, big snowstorm in Missouri and Illinois, Chicago, northern Indiana, Michigan. Uh, we know that. Okay, then the heavy rains and potentially severe weather in the deep south and the delta. The front's coming eastward. Meanwhile, it's still extremely warm up and down the east coast from Boston down to the Carolinas and into Georgia. And then the front arrives here on the bottom right. You can see that that is February, that, that's Friday morning. The front comes on through. The rain changes to snow in northern New York upstate New York, uh, New York uh, northern New England, and then okay, this is a major snowstorm for Toronto and Montreal and Ottawa, by the way, for our Canadian friends. And then the cold highs behind it right here, you can see that. Okay, now here is uh, Saturday. So the trough moves through the east coast. You can see that. Uh, the, the trough is now off the coast. Big high pressure comes in. This is some cold air. We're getting a nice flow out of Canada. You can see these lines coming out of Canada here. And uh, like, you can see what I'm talking about. See the lines coming out of Canada like this? See that? So that's nice flow. It's cold air. And there's our cold high. Okay. Now the ridge is still in the Gulf of Alaska, however. So they, it's, not a, it's not a pattern which is going to last, but it's, it's a nice shot of cold air. Now we go to early next week. This is Monday, February uh, 21. The trough goes back to the west coast. You see that? And you have your ridge in the Gulf of Alaska. So this is a pattern which produces... Oops, excuse me. This, uh, here you go. There's your ridge, and there's your trough. Now, the polar vortex has moved into Greenland. That's not good. When the polar vortex goes to Greenland, there's nothing to keep this ridge from exploding. So, in other words, if the polar vortex is down here, this ridge is much flatter. See that? But it's not. It's got gone up to this far. And here's your trough. So now the ridge takes off. And now we have a very interesting temperature boundary. Here on February 18th, we have Arctic air in the Dakotas, 1045 mega, millibar high. That's huge. Okay, really strong. And then you have the Arctic front. And waves of low pressure along the front. So you have some snow in the Dakotas, southern Minnesota, Wisconsin. And then you have mixed precipitation probably in here along the front. But south of the front, here in Virginia, here in Kentucky, Tennessee, Ohio, New York State, New England, we're all very warm next week. All very warm. Southwest winds bring up the warm air. All right. Now uh, the, um, the front finally begins to arrive here. This is a, so the pattern repeats. This is almost exactly what we're seeing this week. See that? It's a repeating pattern. This week, next week. This week, next week. And now here it is on, on Tuesday night, Wednesday. Another strong cold front, very warm ahead of it. Temperatures in the 60s in the mid-Atlantic, maybe some 70s, uh, 70s in the southeastern states, 50s and 60s into New England. And then the rain comes up, and you get the big snow in the Great Lakes and uh, East Ontario up to uh, Montreal and Ottawa once again. Now the front blows. Here's the uh, February 24th. So that's the 23rd. This is the 24th. The trough is still moving. Now the trough begins to move out of the west coast into the Rockies. But we still have our very strong ridge right here. You can see it, very strong ridge right here. So this is a slow moving front. It really is a slow. And the polar vortex has now left North America unless it's moved into Greenland, which is really bad. And the trough is now on the Rockies. <clears throat> so um, one thing that is changing is that the ridge is moving back into the west coast of North America, you see. Notice before it was out here. Okay, so now it's moving back into the west coast of North America, up towards Alaska. 
And now what happens is that when the front finally blasts its way through here and it comes to the south, so the front stalls across the Gulf Coast on this big Arctic high, 1045 millibars. Look at this monster right here. Now, the problem is another wave of low pressure forms on the front. So here comes another Midwest Ohio Valley uh, rain snowstorm. A rain for the East Coast and rain to, snow to rain in New England because the low goes up to Michigan. See that? The low is, is, does not go along the East Coast. It goes up this way. See that? Right to Michigan. So again, so we have um, this one, first front for the Midwest and the Great Lakes. Then we have this one, Midwest and Great Lakes here. Then we have a third one. So a very active pattern for the Ohio Valley, uh, the Midwest, and a lot of severe weather in the Deep South here delta region the next 7 to 15 days here a lot of severe weather potential coming up okay so uh, we went through that now we go to the extended forecast and look what happens now by uh, the end of February almost the last two days we, the ridge finally comes into the west coast of North America and we have a broad trough covering um, uh, the Great Lakes New England and a bit of a ridge along the southeast coast so this is a classic P&A pattern let me blow this up a little bit here as you can see it this is a classic pattern. Uh, the problem is that this is not a snowstorm pattern. This is a cold pattern, brings out, but this is not a big snowstorm pattern for the Midwest or the East Coast at all because you don't have any of the uh, right conditions in the Atlantic side. The uh, polar vortex is in the Greenland, so you have a positive um, Arctic, a, a positive NAO and a positive Arctic oscillation. So uh, it's not a great pattern. It's cold, but it's not a particularly stormy pattern. And then the bottom right here, this is the same, this is the uh, GFS uh, also for March 2nd. Again, getting air coming out of Canada into the eastern United States, but it's not a snowstorm pattern. Now, one thing I did want to point out here is uh, that back on February 7th, uh, the uh, winds around the Arctic Oscillation, the, the polar vortex, you can see here uh, on the models, look at all the blue lines here. So the blue lines show uh, the winds are changing direction, going from very strong to very weak. Uh, that's what this, the values here show. These are strong winds here. So they're going from uh, essentially west to east, east to west, and they, they swing direction like this, and it causes the polar vortex to weaken, and then you get um, more blocking because the polar vortex is a lot weaker. So that's what this is implying as of February 7th. And if you time you get to the end of the middle of March, you have a very different wind structure on the polar vortex, which means more blocking potentially and a possible return to winter, especially if we're getting this kind of cold pattern stepping up going into March. Indeed, if we look at the European model uh, Atlantic pattern projections, you can see, look at the blue here. I'm going to call it up, but you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the positive NAO. So here in February, uh, we're all very, very positive NAO. We know that. The Greenland, the block, the polar vortex moves to Greenland, very positive NAO. But once we get into March, look what happens. All this blue goes shrinks. You can see how much less it is. And look at the dark red here. This is blocking signature. And then this is a North Atlantic Ridge. So we are getting strong blocking here, developing in the first week of March as we go into the middle of March and uh, almost towards the end of the month. So it's quite possible that there could be a second winter surge here, or another winter surge uh, for the eastern U.S., uh, in early in mid-March so that's what that's indicating so uh, now you can make the case well it's March who cares I mean okay you get, suppose you get a five inch snowfall in March let me look on the next day that's a different matter but whether or not it's important to you is of course that's that's your decision uh, some people say you know March snowfall is meaningless because it doesn't stick around well again that's not for me to say everyone has their own opinion about that but there is some indication the pattern could change here significantly in early, uh, let's say mid-March, after March 7th, for March, all the way up to March 20th or 25. And again, this here is the updated version, February 14th. You can see, you compare that one to this. Look at the red, the blue lines really collapsing here. They're really dropping. And that really indicates the potential for sp either the polar vortex splitting or blocking forming in the Arctic region or something changed in the Arctic, which could set us up for a, uh, you know, a winter counterattack uh, right before the whole thing dies. You know, one of these sur late surges, which happens. And when that's happened a lot. And we've talked about this before. March is often a much colder and stormier month than it used to be.
and you know on the other hand December is a much milder month than it used to be so uh, you know this sort of change and flip-flop is is a return not that much of a surprise so um, you know enjoy the mild weather while you can we got several nice days coming up here but once we get to the end of February it's definitely going to get colder and there's the potential after March 7th for a much stormier pattern to set up for the east coast eastern U.S. Whether it produces, you know, just snow in the mountains or snow to rain or rain, but well, that I don't know yet. But there is indications of a significant pattern flip towards a turn to colder and stormier after March 7th. This is meteorologist DT from Weather Risk. I will see you over on the Facebook page and on the Twitter page and, of course, on the website.